Hello everyone. This hour on verbling. The next in my great short stories class. We are on our twelfth short story, which is actually going to be two for the price of one. Two by Leonora Carrington. In this hour, give me just a second here. In this hour, we're going to read short stories by perhaps the last living member of this original surrealist movement. Carrington was a painter, sculptor, writer, and we'll read her short stories to find out what a short story is and what it can be, because I'm sure these aren't the short stories that you're expecting. So that's a bit about my class, and here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour, and I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. Here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. Which means, turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom quiet. Also, tune in to the new vocabulary that you learn and use it as actively as you can so that I can give you corrections. And finally, open up to your classmates. Just relax and have fun. We're all here to learn and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. So, we're going to get started right now. <clears throat> Give me just a second to get my camera on and my name on screen. It just takes a second to download. And I've given you a link in the chat window, but I'll share my screen so you can see the story um, even if you can't open the link or you don't see it. Give me just a second to get my identification going here. One moment, please. One second, one second, one second. It'll take me just a minute to get my camera on. Hold on. Okay, that should work. Let's see if it works. There we go. Okay, everything's working, finally. So, I'm going to do a quick hello to new faces, in case I don't know you, and then we'll get started. So, first of all, welcome returning hero Anatoly. Nice to see you again, Anatoly. How are you? Hello, hello. I'm fine, thank you. How are you, John? I'm all right. Hanging out on this lovely sunny afternoon here in Portugal. And Anatoly, let's see who else we've got here. I see Wazoo. I think I know you from before, don't I? You've been here before, haven't you, Wasu? No, I ever joined your class before. No, but I share uh -huh. my teacher. Ah, because I recognize the name, so I thought you were here before. Where are you from, Wasu? From Thailand. Wasu, you were in my class. I remember you. I remember you. It yeah. was not not long ago. You were here before, because I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember Wasu from Thailand. But I think you had a different picture. Yes. <laughs> you were here, maybe last weekend. I think you were here last weekend. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. but just one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I remember, yeah. I remember you. I remember you. And then we've got, <coughs> excuse me, then we've got uh, Dogukan. Is that, how do I say your name? Yeah, it's right, Dogukan. Dogukan. Right. <coughs> You're from Turkey. Yeah, from Turkey. Good guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so the G, the G in Turkish is like a J in English, isn't it? Like a J sound, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <coughs> so let let me hear you say your name, because then I can repeat it better. Let my my name? name? Yeah. Uh huh. Doğukan. 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 Do no, it's not something like that. Doğukan. Doğukan. Yeah. Do can. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it. Do can. Okay. Very good. And Mohammed. Hi Mohammed. I don't think I've met you before. Uh yes. I have? Yes. It's oh. Not you must yes. you you must have changed your picture then. Yes. I uh, changed so my I, picture. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. Okay. So remind me where you're from so I can I am from Paris in France. 
You're from Paris in France? I don't remember Mohammed from Paris in France. It's a long time. Uh, two months uh, ago, I think. Ah, okay. Yes. Where in France? Where in Paris? And uh, bah, I demanage. <laughs> What's that? It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh... Are you living in Paris? Yes, I am living in Paris. Okay, great. What part of Paris, if you don't mind me asking? It's from north north east of Paris. In in the nineteenth arrondissement. Ninety. Uh, twenty. Twenty. I was close. I was close. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Near Gare du Nord. Yes. <laughs> I know where you live. Okay. Actually, I don't. I don't know that. I just know the guy in the last class is from the same area, so I remembered what he said. I'm, okay. just, I'm just guessing. <laughs> okay, and welcome back, Ahmed and Yuki. Nice to see you. Nice so, to see you here's what we're going to do, because by reading these short stories, I have a feeling that we have to question what fiction is, because we're going to be playing with our expectations a little bit. So what I want to do is a little introduction to get into the spirit of surrealist um, writing. So first of all, I'm going to share my screen so that we can all see exactly where we should be. So when you open that link in the chat window, you should see this picture. Okay, can everyone see? Uh-oh, hold on, sorry. I lost my picture. One second, one second. This picture is also uh, draw, drawn by your wife. No. <laughs> no, no. This picture was not drawn by my wife. Uh. No, no, she did not. She did not draw this picture. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think drew this picture? Who do you think drew this picture, Yuki? Take a second guess. Take a wild guess. I have no idea. It's Leonora Carrington who drew the picture. No. It looks like something she would draw, though. <laughs> yeah. Rincon? No? I don't know. So I've got this image here because you can see some of her work in this image. Uh, you, she did a lot of sculpture and so you can see those people with triangle faces. That's, very, that, that's basically like the sculptures that she did and some of the painting. We'll see a few examples. Um, so Anyway, when you've got that open, that's on the icon, bleh, the graphic on the first page. Then you go down to the second page, the LJ's class, uh, Carrington's The Debutante and White Rabbits. You've got our table of contents. And I've got a few links for you. You've got her webpage, the official webpage of Leonora Carrington's estate. So you can find out some information there. I've got an article. Nazis, nannies, and <laughs> hair omelets. Leonora Carrington looks back on her extraordinary life. If we have time, we should read that one together, just because it's got the greatest title I've ever seen. There's a video. Oh, my God, a documentary about the life and work of Leonora Carrington. Oh, my God. And the obituary. The obituary is a good place to start because it gives you a little bit of context. Okay? But those are some links. But I want to start here on page three where it says warm up. What we're going to do is get into the spirit of her work by looking at a few keywords which will help you uh, get into the, uh, as I said, spirit of surrealism, what it was all about. So I'm going to ask you about one of these words. You tell me what it think, you think it means, and we'll see if we can come up with an example really quick. Then we're going to look at an example of surrealist art. <clears throat> and we're going to play a surrealist game. We're going to do this. This is all very short. Uh, we're going to spend about five minutes doing this. But I think it's necessary because if we read the story without any context, you might be a little bit confused. So let's start here. Automatism. What comes to mind when you, oh, look, we've got a whole bunch of people now. We've got, we've got Anton. Didn't even see you come in, Anton. Welcome back, Anton. Hi, nice to see you again. Anton, you are addicted. Mm, no. You are addicted to great short stories. Uh, maybe. 
Maybe. You are our returning hero. Anton, let's start with you. I've got a few words on the, on the warm-up chart there. The first is automatism. Automatism. Well, I want you to tell me what you think it means. Because when we figure out what it means, we're going to see how it relates to surrealism and to surrealist writing. So what comes to mind when you hear that word automatism? What does that make you think of? Uh, something that happens without thinking. Exactly. Something. That's exactly it. Something that happens without thinking. Okay, very good. You know what? That's such a good definition that I don't need to say anything else. By the way, can you think of an example? What's something, what's something automatic that we do without thinking? What's a, what's a good example? For example, the heart right. works automat <laughs> automatically. More. <laughs> Auto automatically. Auto automatically. Automatically. Right. Hearts beat. Heart beats. Right. Lungs breathe. <laughs> right. Uh, and there's many more. So these are all automatic things. Okay, Yuki. Since you were speaking next, the next word is unconscious. What Un comes What comes to mind with the word unconscious? What does that make you think of? Unconscious is a state of uh, similar to sleep. Uh, okay. you, you, similar to sleep, good. Uh, sometimes you lose a conscious. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, it is uh, you, are in, you are unconscious. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, after the accident, you, you are unconscious. For some days, maybe right. <laughs> it's a it's, it's a serious it's a serious situation, maybe serious right. condition. Mm. After an accident, you may be you may be left yes. unconscious. So it's something kind of like sleep, but it could be much more serious. Okay, let's go to the big word, Antoli. What do you think about the word surreal? What comes to mind with the word surreal? What does that make you think of? Hmm. Surreal, it is uh, something uh, from fantasy. Something uh, from fantasy. Okay, good. So, so we're going to put down fantasy. Can you think of an example of something that is surreal? Mm. Surreal uh, could be uh, describing of uh, feelings mm -hmm. uh, um, of people. Try Try to be specific. Try to think of an actual example. Uh, let me add one thing to Salvador, fantasy here. Salvador Dali. <laughs> okay, uh, for example. So, painting of Dali, of mm -hmm. course. Those are surreal paintings. I would add one thing to fantasy. I would say fantasy, but also somehow realistic at the same time. Fantasy and realistic, but not something also out of proportion. Somehow you've got fantasy and reality together, but they're not in proportion. They're somehow something is, is, is different or out of balance, or things don't belong together. In Dali, you see the desert, but you see clocks. And you see someone's hand, but you see ants coming out of a hole in it. So it's maybe we could even say a little bit... Uh, well, let's leave it at that for now. That's good enough. The next word is a word you may know or you may not know. But you tell me what you think it means. The word is exquisite corpse. Have you heard of exquisite corpse before? Has anyone heard of that? No, but uh, the word exquisite sounds familiar to me. It should, yeah. Uh, Something to do with, I don't know, beauty. Right. And something, something wonderful. Right, stunning. right, right. Yeah. Something beautiful. And when you think of beautiful, do you normally think of a corpse? I don't know what corpse means. Corpse means dead body. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh. We don't 
we don't normally think of dead bodies as being beautiful. So a beautiful dead body. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. We'll find out what it means in just a second because exquisite corpse was one of the techniques used by surrealists to paint, to write, and to create. And finally, the last word in the list is collage. Collage. Can anyone tell me about collage? What does that bring to mind? Collage. Collage. It uh, reminds me me the painting. Mm -hmm. uh, it the uh, tile of painting. Or how to say it? Mosaic. Like a mosaic. A mosaic, like a puzzle. Uh, yeah. Okay. A mosaic. Puzzle. Um, mosaic is not spelled like that. Sorry. Photographs. <laughs> that's true. Collage photograph. Yes. That's true. You can also do collage with photos. That's true. Um, can anybody think of an example of a collage? This is for the whole group. Anyone? Who's got an example of a collage that comes to mind? You can think of art. You can think of advertising. Any, any collages come to mind? No? Nope. Newspaper clippings. Okay, Maybe. for example. Okay, so newspaper clippings. Okay. Maybe a straightening letter from from kidnapper. <laughs> exactly. When you've got when you've got a you've got a ransom note. Yes. A ransom note. When they send the ransom note, it's the clippings ransom of a newspaper and they make a word collage. That's right. It's a collage of words. I agree completely. <laughs> well look, let's we're gonna get back to Exquisite Corpse because that was a surrealist game. And it's not an accident that it's striking an unusual combination of words. It's not an accident. The game was all about creating meaning from something totally random, something totally unexpected, something unconscious, something automatic. So these are all elements of surrealism. But first, let's look at a quick example. So on our notes document, you can click on that link or just watch my screen. I'm going to share my screen so you can just take a look. <clears throat> what I'm going to ask you to do here is look at this picture. When it opens, it'll take a second here, one second. I'm going to click on the image. <clears throat> and now you can see, hopefully on your screen, you can see that okay. Can everyone see the painting? Yes. I Fantastic. See. The title of this painting is Time Transfixed by René Magritte. Time transfixed. Tell me, what is unusual about this picture? <laughs> Anything unusual stand out for you? It looks like a sh uh, surrealistic, surrealistic picture of uh, Dari. Dari is a surrealistic, surrealistic picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, it's similar. It's at the same time as Dali, but René Magritte uh, had his own style. But he's a surrealist as well. So, <clears throat> it looks uh, like I'm dreaming. It looks like a dream. It but, looks like a dream. And in our dreams, what does our unconscious mind do for us when we're dreaming? Um, I mean, are you aware when you're dreaming? Probably not. You're unconscious, right? Yes, Freud said that uh, uh, dream is uh, unconscious uh, desire of sexual desire. <laughs> Freud would say that. Freud said. <laughs> Freud, <clears throat> Freud said a lot of things, but that's not a, It's not an accident that we're talking about Freud because Freud was one of the big influences on the surrealists, of course. One of the big influences because. He was the first to give a name to the other part of the mind, <clears throat> the part, the irrational part, the unconscious. I'll tell you what, let me share my screen in a different way here because um, I want to share some things with you, but I need you to, I need to read the browser. So give me a second here, and then we're going to read the stories. But give me just a second here to share the picture a little closer up. There you 
go. Hopefully you can see that now. There you go. Okay. So there is Time Transfixed by Rene Magritte. And <clears throat> what did I want to say about this? I wanted to say, hang on just a second here. I wanted to say, I had a few questions for you to think about. One second. I have to open my questions. One second, one second. Um, so how do <clears throat> how do dreams the unconscious and um, automaticity or automatic thing how does that play into this image so what do, what do you actually see what what kind of room is this number one what kind of room is this Freud or to say that to no, don't, don't worry about Freud I don't we'll get to Freud in a minute <laughs> nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Okay. What kind of what kind of room are we looking at? Let's look at the let's look at the realistic part. What kind of room is this? Anyone? Right. Anyone in the room? Not just Yuki. Yuki, you can talk, but I want ev everyone to participate too. Otherwise, I'm going to call on you and make you talk. Like Mohammed, I'm going to call on you, Mohammed. What kind of room is this? Is that you in the room. It's the living room, yeah. <laughs> Anything unusual about it? No, it's a normal living room. But what is out of place in this room? What's out of place in this living room? Maybe I could ask... The fireplace? The fireplace. Okay. Let me, let me ask Wazoo. What's out of place in the fireplace, Wazoo? What's out of place? What's the element that's unusual? Wasu. Mm, the train, the, the of cars. Course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. There's a train <clears throat> coming out of the fireplace. Huh. So, um, so my question is, um, is the painting, is the painting serious? Mm. No. So do you think it's a joke? Yeah. It, it's impossible that uh, the tin toy uh, is, is uh, working above the, above the floor. Of course. And it's not just floating, it's coming out of the fireplace. And the fireplace is closed, too. Even stranger. Anatoly, mm. how, does, how does this make you feel when you look at this image? How does it make you feel? Hmm. Maybe uh, we can expect uh, uh, like excuse to the past uh, looking to, to uh, that uh, wall. So you mean you mean something from the past is coming through the fireplace? Is that what you mean? Yes. Ah, so it's like a doorway of some kind. Mm hmm Okay, very good. And Yuki, earlier you said something about makes you feel like you're dreaming. I think. Yes. Uh, Freud would say that this is a symbol of men. Uh, um, it's a it's a made, phallic, it's a phallic made the, symbol. Made the penis, <laughs> and it's a desire of having a sex, such a kind of thing. Freud would say that anything that looks like a phallic is a phallic. So that is a phallic symbol, according to Freud. Phallic symbol, yes. Well, we can debate whether or not that's true. <laughs> sorry. But the, sorry. but the important thing is that there's a mood, there's a certain feeling, a dreamlike feeling. And everything is realistic, but it's out of place. And in fact, there's a kind of collage, even to this painting. Because it's as if we've taken an image of a train and we've put that image into a normal room. And suddenly, there's a mystery. It's a mysterious image. Well, I want you to think about that for a moment and we're going to read our first story. Think about this painting. Think about what we've learned about surrealism. And let's discuss at the end of the story. It's quite short. So we're probably going to be reading both stories and discussing them. But let's do the first one. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download a copy so that I can share my screen with you. 
put it on screen. We're each going to take a chance, each going to take a turn to read this. Let me just download this as a PDF. Because if I download it, then I can see you. If I don't download it, I can't see anyone in the room. So give me just a second to open this as a PDF. And let's see if I got this open. Uh, okay, while this is opening, you can go down to... Okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so while this is opening, you can go down to page three of our first text for Leonard Carrington, The Debutante. Okay, let's start reading. By the way, Ahmed, what is a debutante? Is that clear what that is? No, I didn't know. Does anyone want to define debutante for us before we read? Debut. What does it mean to what does it mean to debut? What does that mean? To debut something? Uh, the first appearance, maybe. The first appearance, right. So a debutante is a person who's appearing for the first time. Usually a young woman, especially in the old days, makes her first appearance to to society or something like that. So this is the story of the debut of a young woman. Ahmed, why don't you start us off on on page three? Okay. The Debutant by Le Leonora. Leonora. Leonora Carrington. When I was a debutant, I often went to the zoological garden. I went so often that I was better acquainted with animals than with the young girls of my age. It was to escape from the world that I found myself each day at the zoo. The beast I knew best was a young hyena. She knew me too. She was extremely intelligent. I taught her French, and in return she taught me her language. We spent many pleasant hours in this way. For Excellent. The okay. Do you know what Do you know what a hyena is? Yeah, uh, it is a kind of animal. Uh, uh -huh. mm, I don't remember. Uh, it, has, it has the sound it has of a, this animal. It has a special sound, doesn't it? Yeah, like he's giggling or laughing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's those. It's those kind of prairie dogs. They're kind of big dogs, and they sound like they're laughing. A hyena. Okay. Is is this how you spent your afternoons when you were a kid, Ahmed, learning the language of the hyenas? Uh, I don't remember that, but probably learning the <laughs> language of, uh, of cats. Might of be. cats. Mm. <laughs> so this is a, a little bit of an unusual story already because she's befriending an animal and learning its language. Okay, let's see what happens next. Let's go to, oh my goodness, I didn't even see you come in, Albu Dorada. Alborada. Alborada. Hello, Alborada. How are you? Hello. Good evening. Where are you from, Alborada? I'm from Spain. You're from Spain. Excellent. Well, we're reading our first story by Leonor Carrington. Will you take the second paragraph for us? Mm -hmm. For the 1st of May? Is That's the... right. Okay. Uh, for the 1st of May, my mother had arranged a ball in my horror. For the nights I suffered, uh, I have always detested balls uh, above all those given in my own honor. On the morning of May 1st, 1934, very early, I went to visit the hyena. 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 What message she told her? I must go to my ball this evening. Yeah, by the way, there's some bad language. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention that. There's a little bit of bad language. Ball, in this case, is not the kind of ball that you bounce around the court. Ball mm -hmm. is a fancy party. A fancy party. A ball is like where you dance the waltz. A ball. Often a ball will be a masquerade where everyone wears masks. A ball. So this is the story of the debut of our debutante. 
Does she want to go to the ball? Abo Aborada, does she want to go to the ball? Is so, she is she happy about going to her ball? No, I didn't know. No, not at all. She detests them. That means she hates them. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, well, why don't you continue? Uh, I'll, I'll I'll highlight in blue. Why don't you continue to here? Uh, oops, sorry. Why don't you continue to there? Okay. We're lucky, she said. Uh, I will go happily. I will go happily. I don't know how it ends. Uh, but after all, I could engage in conversation. There will be many things to it, said I. I have seen wagons load entirely for food coming up the house. And you complain, replied the hyena with disgust. As for me, I eat only once a day, and what rubbish they stick me with. I have a bowl I eat. I almost loved. You have only to go in my place. <laughs> Very good. So we've got Earl who's dealing with the situation she doesn't want to go to. She doesn't want to go to the ball. And we've got her friend, a hyena from the zoo, who's got a very interesting situation himself, which is that she can't, she can't understand why this girl doesn't want to go to place with all this food. So they strike a deal. You go in my place. Anatoly, why don't you continue uh, here? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, we uh, do not uh, look enough alike, otherwise I would uh, gladly go, said the hyena, a little sad. Listen, said I, in the evening light one does not see very well, and uh, 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 if you uh, were uh, disguised a little, no one, no one uh, would notice in the crowd. Besides, we are almost the same size. You are my only friend. I implore you. <clears throat> she reflected upon this sentiment. I knew that uh, she wanted to accept. It's uh, it is done, she said suddenly. It was very early. Not many uh, keepers were about. Quickly, I opened the cage, and in a moment we were in the street. I took a taxi at the house. Everyone uh, was in bed. In my room, I brought out the uh, gown I was uh, uh, supposed to wear that evening. It was a little long, and the hyena walked with difficulty in my high-heeled shoes. I found some uh, gloves uh, to uh, disguise her hands, uh, which were too hairy to resemble mine. Uh, when uh, the sunlight entered, she strolled around the room several times, walking more or less correctly. We were so very occupied that my mother, who came to tell me good morning, almost opened the door before the hyena could hide herself under my bed. There is a bad odor in the uh, room, uh, said my mother, opening the window. Before this evening, you must uh, take a perfumed bath with my new salts. So apparently, if you're going to go to the ball with your hyena, you should really wash your hyena first. That's the <laughs> yeah. moral of the story. Yes. So, Anatoly, so what's happening in this part of the story? Give us a little summary. Uh, she invite to uh, go uh, hyena with her, and uh, it uh, looked uh, funny uh, how they uh, drove in the taxi and uh, uh, how hyena um, was hiding, uh, hidden uh, under her bed and uh, uh, that note 
of uh, her mother uh, also <laughs> funny and uh, well her mother came into the room her mother actually came into the room to open the window I think yes right yes. not just a note she, her mother strolled around the room several times or something like that oh, oh no 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 that was them sorry we were so occupied when my mother came we almost opened the door the hyena hides under the bed and the mother comes in opens the window and says man it smells in here you have to take a bath so she thinks it's the girl. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, let's go on to Anton. Why don't you pick it up? Uh, let's take it to the bottom of page four, Anton. Agreed, said I. She did not t stay alone. I believe that uh, the odor was too strong for her. Do not be late for breakfast, she said as she left the room. The greatest difficulty was to find a disguise for the hyena's face. For hours and hours uh, we sought an answer. She rejected all of my proposals. At last she said, I think I know a solution. You have a mate? Yes, I said, perplexed. Well, that's it. You will ring for the mate and when she enters, we will throw uh, ourselves upon her and remove her face. I will wear her face this evening in place of my own. That's Wait a second. Bad. What does she mean, throw herself upon her? Is that clear? What's she going to do? Mm. What do you think she's going to do? Attack. A yeah. Attack, yeah. <laughs> you ring for the maid, we're going to jump on her and rip off her face. So this is... A hyena with a mind of its own. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Anton. That's not practical, I said to her. She will probably die when she has no more face. Someone will surely find the corpse and we will go to prison. I'm hungry enough to eat her, replied the hyena. So, rule number two. If you have a hyena and you don't know what to do with your hyena, you can always have the hyena just eat your maid and then you can use the maid's face. So this is a very practical story so far. Okay, so they're hatching a plan, right? They're hatching yeah. a plan here. Um, well, let's. This is a short story, so let me just see. Da, 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 da. Change two. Da, da. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. Let's let's let's. We'll we'll get to the discussion in a minute. Hold on a second. So they're hatching a plan, but they haven't quite settled on the plan yet. Anton, why don't you take it to the bottom of the dialogue right here? Okay. And the bones? Those two, she said. Then it's settled. Only if you agree to kill her before removing her face. It would be too uncomfortable otherwise. Okay, Anton, what do you think about this plan? Was, is this what you would do if you were going to have someone impersonate you at your debutante ball? Uh, no. It so <laughs> sounds very... Uh, yes, surreal. It sounds very surreal. It yeah. sounds pretty savage to me. So the hyena is the hyena. What's the hyena going to do so that no one recognizes her at the party? Kill the maid and uh, take her face. She's going to kill the maid, take her face, and wear it around. What does that tell you <laughs> about, about society? Well, what's the important lesson we're learning here? So what kind, of, what kind of ball is this going to be, I wonder? Why is it so important for her? Uh, is the plan worth all this effort? I don't know. These are things we have to think about. Well, let's let's take it to the end of the story and see what we come up with. I'm not sure if it's worth all this effort. Let's go to uh, Dokan. Dokan. Let's take it from these. Let's take these three here. Okay. From good night. From good. Okay. Good, it's all right with me. I rang for Mary, the maid, with a certain nervousness. I would not have done it, it if I did not detest dances so much. When Mary entered, I turned to, 
to the wall so as not to see. I admit that it was done quickly. A brief cry and it was over. While the hyena ate, I looked out of hyena. Hyena. While the Good. hyena ate, I looked out the window. A few minutes later, she said, "I cannot eat any more. The two feet, the, the two feet are left. But if you have a little bag, I will eat them later in the day. You will find in the wardrobe a bag embroidered, embroidered with flowers, uh, the lies." Remove the remove the hand carnishes inside it and take it. She she did as indica indicated. At last she said, "Turn around now and look, because I'm beautiful." Before the mirror mirror, the hyena admired herself in Mary's face. She had eaten very carefully all around the face, so that's. Uh, around the face so that was that what was left was just what was needed surely it's properly done i said i toward evening when the hyena was all dressed she declared it i'm in a very good mood i have the impression that i will be great success in uh, this evening when the music great below success on the second syllable great success success this evening when the music below had been heard for some time i said her, to her go now and remember not to place yourself at my mother's side she will surely know that it is not i otherwise i know no one good good luck i embrace it i embrace it her as we parted but she smelled very strong Okay, so do you think their plan is going to be successful, Dokkan? Do you yeah, think they're going to pull it off? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Because she smells like a hyena and she's wearing a dead girl's face. That's why not. But maybe, maybe it'll work. I don't know. Um, okay, what do you think is going to happen next, Dokkan? Before we move on, what do you think is going to... Actually, this is for the whole class. So we, the plan has been hatched. We've got everything we need to make it work. What do you think is going to happen when they go to the party? This actually, is for the whole group. Class, what do you think? What's going to happen? Actually, I can't imagine it. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. Any, anyone want to venture a guess? Uh, I suppose the movement of the hyena must be somewhere instead of she has the face of the maid. And some of the people are not, not known by the hyena, and so it's too difficult uh, for her. I so I. So the hyena is going to give herself away because she doesn't move like a person, and she doesn't really know who's at the party, right? She's going to give herself away. Is that it? Did I understand correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they're probably going to figure out that something's not quite right <laughs> when they get to the party. Let's find out. Let's see. We're up to Mohammed. Mohammed, I have a question for you. Are you okay. there, Mohammed? Yes. What's the right pronunciation for um, Fleur, Fleur de Lis? Is that right? Fleur de Lis? How do, how do, the, the French word when it said in the second paragraph you will find in the wardrobe a bag embroidered with say that for us in French uh, can you select that I don't say it's it's uh, hold on it's here I don't know if you can see this there uh, give it a second can you see it now yes Fleur de Lys Fleur, Fleur de Lys Fleur de okay. Lys And what is that? Do you know what that is? Uh, no. Let me see if I can give a little. Let me see if I can give a picture here. It's a like a symbol of the uh, king of France. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's like something you would find in the crest or on a shield or something. Uh, if I if I Google for it in images, 
I'm afraid to share my screen because it never works right, but let me try. If you Google for it in images, you can see a picture down here, kind of like this spade-looking design. And I'll see if I can make it a little bit bigger for you. Can you see it now? Yes. There we go. There we go. OK, so just because maybe it's not obvious what that is. All right, so let's find out what happens when they get to the party. Let me share my screen again. If Google lets me, of course, because you never know. Sometimes Google lets me. Sometimes Google doesn't let me. You never know what's going to happen with Google Hangouts. Hold on a second. Oops. Come on, screen. Let's share. Come on, screen. You were behaving so well a minute ago. Let's try to behave well again, screen. Infinite, infinite tunnel. Yeah. It's because I keep clicking screen share and it won't do anything. Hold on. Come on. It'll work. It'll work. Give it a second. How did I get to work last time? I think I downloaded something and then canceled it. So if I try to download questions and answers and then I cancel it, something's got to break this script. So maybe that will work. Otherwise, we're going to read the story without sharing the screen, which is OK, but some of you might not have the link. Nope, I can no longer share my screen. So you're going to have to go to um, you're going to have to go to page five on your own because right now my screen sharing is broken, unfortunately. Actually, last time I think I turned on my camera and then turned it off. Let me try that real quick. Let's see if that works. If not, we're going to have to do this without screen sharing. OK, screen sharing is broken, so forget that. OK, so you're going to go to page 6. And I think we left off with Night Had Fallen. OK, so Mohammed, go to page 6, and we're on Night Had Fallen. Do you see where we are? OK. Night Had Fallen, exhausted by the emotion of the day. I took a book and uh, sat down by the open windows. I remember that I was I was reading Gulliver's Travels by uh, Jonathan w Swift. It was perhaps an hour later uh, that uh, the first sign of uh, misfortune misfortune and uh, announced uh, itself. A bat uh, enter, enter, entered the, through to the windows emitting little cries. I am terribly, terribly afraid of bats. I hid, I hid behind the chair, my tent shatter, shattering, shattering. Scarcely was uh, I on my knees, knees, my knees, when uh, the biting of the wings was drawn out by a great uh, commotion and my it at my door. My mother ent entered, par with lunch. We were coming to sit uh, ourselves at the table. She said, when when the thing who was in uh, your place uh, rose and cried. She I should be when the thing that was in your place. That's a typo, sorry. When the thing that was in your place rose and cried. It's a mistake in the text, sorry. Okay. I smell I smell a little strong eh. Well, as for me, I don't know I don't not eat cake. With this with these words she removed removed her face and ate it. A great leap and she dis despair despaired out the windows. The That's window. right. <clears throat> What's a great leap? What's another word for leap? Is that clear what leap is? It's right. a jump. A jump, jump. right. Yeah. 
So a great jump, and she disappeared out the window. And that is the story of the debutante. <laughs> what do you think? Very funny story. <laughs> I like it. I don't know if it's funny. Only I, I, I'm sorry for Muddy. <laughs> Marie, Marie, Marie. Got, Marie got the short end of the stick in the story. Poor Marie. Poor Marie. <clears throat> Uh, listen, let's do this, everyone. We're at the end of the hour. We've completed the first story. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, in the second hour, we're going to discuss what we've read a little bit. We're going to read the second story. and Then we'll have a longer discussion of both. I also want to show you the surrealist game, Exquisite Corpse, to give you an idea of how these stories may have been written. Okay? So come back in the next hour. I'm going to start the class in exactly one minute from now. We'll talk about your impressions about the first story, show you a little game, and then we'll read the second one for the rest of the class. Okay, so join me again in exactly a minute. If you can't come, just follow along by watching, or go to my profile and click follow so that I can contact you, you can contact me, and you can see my upcoming classes. Okay, so the second hour of great short stories coming up in one minute from now. Bye for now. See you in the next class. See you. Thank you. See you soon. See you. See you. See you. See you. See you.